Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the clubhouse. Are, are we? Are we're live now? Man, it's a good thing that the audio wasn't turned on a minute ago. Because we were saying all kinds of weird stuff. It's a good thing it was totally muted. So, um, you know, happy hands today. Um, we have just gotten back from 5 and 5, which was mm -hmm. awesome. And we went and bought this really expensive candle. This was, oh, uh, do you have candles? I don't know how, I mean, we've never actually, by the way, we've never actually celebrated a handsome day with a cake. I just want you guys to know that. <laughs> but if you have, that's awesome. But I just want you to know that we're not quite that narcissistic. But with, uh, we with are this, narcissistic, yeah. we're just not that, that narcissistic. narcissistic. Yeah, exactly. we, we thought it would be kind of a cool way to, uh, to celebrate by doing a cake, and and since we've been doing a lot of different things, and this is this is in the line of like random things, random streams, um, <laughs> not like high production value clearly. Um, and you are on the set of uh, Jay's Music Exchange. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the adapted version of the set, which we filmed, uh, did you get that from the video on? I just want to let everybody know that we have shouted out colored candles here. <laughs> These are in the right order, too. What, what do you mean? This is the details that really matter, people. Yeah. This is the details. This is where we get paid the big bucks. Uh, yeah. There are a few things we're doing tonight. So uh, probably the thing you will all enjoy the most is we're going to premiere the music from the 2010 uh, Hanson.net membership kit. So we're going to play all five of the new songs that are on there. But tell them what we're going to well, do. We're actually going to do something really cool. We, we thought of this right before we put the stream up. And um, like I did for the Marshmallow Lover song, if you guys saw that, we're just going to do like a, a, a little painting while, while the song's playing. It'll keep you guys having something enjoying to, enjoyable to watch. Even if it's a terrible painting, it'll be something that's happening. And then we're going to pick one random Hans.net member uh, that's signed in watching the stream on HNet. And uh, we're going to give you the painting that we finished. So that's going to be pretty fun. So and that's going to be picked at random. If, if you have somebody who's a fan club member that you think might want a painting, or if you are one, make sure you sign in. Sign in to, you know, make sure you log in. And uh, because we're going to look at who's logged on and pick somebody that's going to get that particular painting. You know five could, songs, five paintings. Yeah, but you know what we could also do is we could light these candles, right? We could blow the candles out, and then we could FedEx you one of these candles. So Why would they want to lick the icing? Because okay. we know you guys all want to be wow. a part of this celebration. That okay. was okay. That may have been I, one of the Ike dumbest is, things Ike, I've ever seen. Ike is also going to pick some random Hansnet members and send them a, a candle with some icing on it. That's because he I, just. I object to that. He objects, but um, oh well. Um, what we do want you guys to do is we want to kind of share tonight, answer questions. Hear some of your stories about uh, how you might have spent, you know, Hanson Day in a past year, um, and so or just, what, or just like stories of being a fan of the band, traveling to see shows. Yeah, maybe oh. the stuff that things that you remember cool. that were funny or random or just memorable. I'll, I'll be right back. I gotta go get a match real quick. <laughs> yeah, you could get a match for another reason. You, you should get uh, some plates and some forks and some stuff. Yeah, we. If we're actually, are we gonna actually eat this cake? I mean, this is really nice cake, so I don't want it to go to waste. Yeah. Um, but if you want to send a question, go to Hans.net, sign in, and um, PM me with the the title being question and the name of the record you want to ask a question about, and then ask your question, and uh, it'll be pretty cool. Hopefully, we'll get something awesome from you guys. I mean, we're trusting in you. Because that's really all we had planned. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you're going to go through questions. I'm going to start opening up some questions. Uh, by the way, there's also some random items in this room that um, are, well, this is photographed in, in, the, uh, in the artwork of the Shattered Out album and was the boom box that we used for uh, Stand Up, Stand Up. So this is like a little mini Hanson artifact. And then unfortunately for the boombox, I got a hold of a paintbrush and uh, sort of defaced it. Um, but, but, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's colorful. Like, it's like ugly pretty. Yeah. Exactly. It's a little messy. But that's kind of the idea. So, and then we have random, random elements from Hanson land. Oh, 
Oh, there it is, actually. That is the marshmallow lover's thing that you painted. Yeah. Come here. This right here is the tambourine. I don't know where the top is. This is the tambourine that these two, actually, have been the tambourines that have been the percussion on every record since, gosh, since underneath, maybe? So the last three albums have literally just been... If you've ever heard of tambourine, it's been these. And also, this is what, uh, what Al used in the Thing About Something video. That is some serious incense. Oh, my gosh. It brings back memories. What is that burning smell? It does bring back memories. But this is not... I don't think this is not Jampa. But it's, it's nice smelling. Um, anyway, so come on over. Do you have a match? I have a match. Okay. And I have... I have a oh, knife, I, and I have... How about a question? I, yeah, go I have for a it. question. Uh, this is about underneath, and it's from Hanson Reflections. Or Reflection. Not multiple, but individual. Uh, it says, uh, what was the hardest thing about making underneath, and when did you really feel like you had fully finished the album? I've watched Strong Enough to Break, and it's so inspiring to me. I really want you guys to know how much we all support you guys as fans. So, she's from Chicago, and it's Megan. I mean, I, I think there's, there's we, we thought we were done with underneath several times, to be honest, <laughs> and and that was, I guess, part of the the thing that was so hard about that album was we really did have a lot of moments where we felt like we were done, and then we had to go back and kind of rethink the record and push harder, and and um, it, and, and so not in the good way. <laughs> Not in the way that we did it with Shout It Out, where we're like, you know what? The record's not done. We need horns. Well, the, the, I think the, the thing that's important about it is it's, each album has been a part of the journey in a really like, significant way. And, and that album, you know, we, we, believed in, we believed in the headspace we were in and, and what we were trying to say. And, you know, somebody that had been with a label before would have understood, hey, these guys have got a clear vision listen to these you know these key songs wow this record's ready to go um, but I, after the, the end of the record I think for me the, the time when it finally felt like it was truly done you know was when we recorded Penny and Me Definitely. because I mean we, we, we it could have been multiple different albums but because of all of the turmoil we held that song back for over a year um, you know and because we were working with a lot of people and we were like we don't want to give up a piece of this song and we were trying to kind of appease the label and said this is crazy you know we're not gonna do this but when we sat down and recorded that one after all the other songs mm -hmm. it it felt like it just felt it felt like w there was no way we were going to go back after that i will also you know? say one other thing about that which is that um when we were recording um other songs on the record and when we were thinking about penny and me and whatnot we did do that demo that is shown in the film where Zach's playing drums in the closet and stuff like that. That was a big closet. It was a, it was a nice it was a nice closet. This this next right stands in a kind of an odd spot, isn't yeah. it? Sorry, we we were set up to play music and we decided to just kind of turn it into a spontaneous set. Um, but the other thing uh, that I think is worth noting is that that uh, recording that is on um, the CD of strong that comes with strong enough to break. There's this really kind of broken down very lo-fi sounding recording of, of Penny and Me, and that recording of Penny and Me is the original in the closet version where we recorded it to a four track cassette recorder. So, you know, there you go. Yeah. Hey, can I, can I just say, because this is, I want to include you guys in this process. We, we are like geeking out about the streaming thing, and every time I say how awesome it is, I feel like something's like... <laughs> You know, like the the world just like the fates just say like, "Hey, buddy, take this." We um, we did have the audio on by accident when we started, and but you need to under, you need to know like what we're doing right now is about you know kind of doing things first and trying new things. So uh, hope you're enjoying the randomness of of this, and we want to get way more random. Anyway, I just want to say like if we have technical difficulties or anything like that, just know that we're we're trying things that people aren't really doing with the technology of being able to stream really high quality stuff anytime, anywhere. So anyway. And also the mobile factor with this one is, what you may not realize is that this is because of a CPU strapped on the back of our incredible, reliable Man. cameraman. That you doing might know great is Ticker job. Man. <laughs> Ticker Man, he's also known as Ticker Man. Yes, the guy with the I, random. I do have another question. Um, Real quick. Oh, go for it. You want to blow before the we blow, before, before the candles the like melt the entire okay. cake, 
Maybe we should that is a happy like Hanson Day to you. Happy Hanson Day to us. Happy Hanson Day to you. Happy Hanson Day to you. Happy Hanson Day to you. Happy Hanson Day to everyone. Happy Hanson Day to us. Happy Hanson Day to us. We always nice. knew Ike was full enough, uh, of enough hot air to blow out all those candles. There you go. And, and just so everybody knows, that was 13 candles for those of you who were counting. It has been 13 years since Middle of Nowhere, which is kind of the initiation of the celebration. But the other thing that if it was also... If there's ever a Hanson Museum, Isaac will be the curator because he'll remember all of the random details that... Anyway, anyway and also for those of you... I also think it's kind of interesting that, that Middle of Nowhere happened to be released in the month that it was released. Mm -hmm. It was released in May, and interestingly, before that point, we had always counted our initial performance at Mayfest here in Tulsa uh, as our as our kind of initial gig, because it was the first time that the three of us had actually performed together publicly, and, and that was in May of 1992. Well, it, it, um, I have a question about Middle of Nowhere, and that well. Um, I'm going to grab Legend my coffee. Legend was asking, um, whose idea was it to have Zach scream random things at the end, look at you, and how did the idea come about? I, I'm not sure the answer to that Zach question. Zach was drunk honest. at the time. It was... It he, he had a drinking problem at a year early age. Yeah. It, he was drunk on <laughs> probably great soda or Mountain Dew. Yes. Or Dr. Pepper. Yeah. When you when you leave a, a small, crazy person in a studio uh, for extended periods of time, 12 hours at a time, for several months at a time, there tends to be kind of a cuckoo factor that, Pent -up that energy? happens. And so I think that was the type of thing where we were recording the outro vocals and uh -huh. it just happened. You know, it was just like like I screwed something up and we were going for it. and Started doing funny random stuff that we were laughing about trying to keep our composure. <laughs> and then something like that. Then it became a part. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. Any it's, other there, it's along the same lines of... The middle section of Man from Milwaukee. Well, I, I remember a little. It bit was just random. Which was, which was that we, it the outro was was long and the groove was like, it was Rockin'. extended, because essentially the it, everybody was really liking it and it had you know, it kind of kept going on and on, and there was a question of what like how to make continue to have something besides just musical ad libs, and at the time we were playing it and you started going. You started like riffing and, and, and just and it was like a one eye we goose. All kind of listening to it in the wow. studio, and essentially it was like, yeah, Zach, that's actually kind of hilarious. Go in there, and I don't think anyone at the time thought it would necessarily be kept because it was just kind of like it was, you know, it was it was funny and it was sort of like one of those things in the studio, but um, then mixing came along and there you go. It was funny. It was it was, it was it good. For eternity. Yeah. Um, cool. I Which you did in part reenact. At the 505 I, I event. I did my best. It's, it's hard to reenact genius, and I struggle <laughs> with that, you know. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's a whole other those of you who don't realize, we're being sarcastic. I, I, I think they're good. I think they're good. They yeah, probably picked I, up that. Yeah, um, I'm, just, I'm just making sure, you know. I'm, I'm just going to keep throwing <laughs> them out here. I have a question um, about uh, Lulabelle. Asking what is Lulabell about? I think the name is Luberlu. I can't quite pronounce it. Um, you know, I think for all of us, every song has a slightly different meaning. But essentially, I think Lulabell is is kind of about losing something that was the best thing in your life, and still having to find a way to cope with it. You know, um, having to find a way to say like the best thing that ever happened to me is now gone, but I've got to continue on, so I've got to find a way to live with it and be positive in, a, in at least some way. You know, heartbroken, yeah. you know, you're, you're letting someone go. It could be uh, definitely from the perspective of, you know, a father, of a daughter. Uh, I was all, I, that was kind of always the context in which I kind of thought of it as, or at least, you know, again, emotions apply to various different scenarios, and, and a lot of the times, you know, stories that are told in songs can apply to personal things in your life in a different way. But I was kind of had thought of it as, you know, a father having to let go of the innocence of a, of a young child and having to let go of the innocence of his young daughter and re and seeing her grow up. 
you know, and that kind of thing. And, and you know, that, that was the way I had always kind of looked at it in some form or another. But it can but also – apply it could apply to other things. Losing innocence as well. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Definitely, yeah. You know, I, I think for me, uh, when we were writing that song, there definitely was kind of a personal kind of like lost love element to it. But never – I think never exclusively. I think that, it, like like you said, it, it has all these different meanings. And so you have to kind of leave it somewhat open for even the other guys in the band to express their own personal feelings about what the message of each song is. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I've got a question from Japan about Shout It Out, which is pretty awesome. This is Asaka, and she was saying, hey, guys, I'm watching from Japan. Uh, is there any other song from Shout It Out where Hanson will dance? Question mark. Um, well, Are we, have we really, have we really kind of talked about them? I don't think we really have talked about them. Give a little video? Um, the yeah. the, the follow-up yeah. single is, is a song called Give a Little, which um, you guys that watch the stream and that we're at Five of Five will have heard. The song, and yeah. Yeah, we're, you know, it's kind of weird to say about your, your songs, but it's a, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's one of those songs that is sort of, it, 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 you kind of do have to dance to it, or at least that's what it should be. And in fact, it's it's really about dancing. It's about, and it's about the kind of the flirtation and the dynamic between a guy and a girl, and sort of the the idea that you sort of have to make your move and um, encouraging the the male species, you know, the guys that are like us, that you know, you got to actually take the first step and step out there and take risks that she might she might not turn uh, you down. She might turn you down. Yeah. But um, so I, I think the the easy answer is yes. But not in the same way as um, thinking about something. I mean, thinking about something was meant to embody this sort of retro, over-the-top production feeling. And the give a little video. We should probably is, is, wait on saying too much. Well, it's uh, we can say it's just it's it's a more personal thing. It's more about yeah. It's just more about Individual having a good time. And, yeah. Anyway, we'll, there's a lot more to tell. We'll be as that comes. You guys will see clips of yeah, it. Yeah, we we don't want to give it all away too fast because I mean, for God's sake, we're still enjoying the thinking about something video, and it's still. Uh, people are still watching it, and of course, we're looking it, it forward to opportunities. It hasn't been top ten on MySpace. I mean, it's been no, no, thanks not to really. You guys, yeah, yeah, exactly. spreading the word. It's awesome. Exactly. Thank you guys so much you, for getting out there, spreading the word about the video and the music, and um, you know, these days, like fans, the word of mouth is so much more important than any TV show or, or any billboard or any you know, rack in Walmart or whatever that you could ever get. Like, the power of individuals is so important. And so when you guys go out there and you tell your friends and you, you know, go on your Facebook or whatever and you say, hey, check out this video, that's huge. And thank you guys so much. It's, mm -hmm. it's incredible. It reminds me. Did you tell them about the, about the Hanson shirts? I didn't tell them about the Hanson we should, shirts. We should tell them that. Yeah. Um, Which I'm... We, I heart Hanson. You heart Hanson. <laughs> we decided to, these hand, Zach, do you want to model the shirt a little oh. bit? I don't know if that's Hello. Hello. Um, that didn't molest sorry. the shirt. Sorry. Um, can you molest that shirt yeah, real yeah. quick? Yeah. Um, so, so we'll get you some bubble wrap in a minute. Uh, the, 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 we yeah. made these shirts originally. <laughs> the merchandise team here um, at Hanson headquarters, led by Zach, uh, decided to do the I heart Hanson shirts in dedication sort of to this day, thinking, well, on, on Hanson Day, people kind of do random things, and it'd be fun to just do, like, really cool, I, you know, I love Hanson shirts. And so because of today, we are just until until midnight, is that what we decided? Until and, midnight. Until midnight, the I Heart Hanson shirts in the store are discounted. Are we doing $5? Five bucks so off. five bucks off um, the shirt. So if you haven't got one of those shirts, um, they've sold really fast, and there is limited stock of them. So you should go check it out. They're five dollars cheaper than usual, and we just thought it'd be kind of a cool way to say thanks. And they're sort of fun shirts to wear your Hanson pride out there. Exactly. Um, and uh, honestly, they're, they're some of my favorite shirts just because they're so like the bright colors and you know, yeah, they're yeah. Cool. They're just very they're just very summery amongst other things. I think. Yeah, you, know, you guys haven't seen all the art for the album. Shout it out! But really, the inspiration to do the shirts was the idea of how much it fit with the art of this album the bright colors the yellows and the reds and the blues and the whites and it just it kind of made so much sense that that was what brought the idea to the forefront so yeah. hopefully you guys will enjoy that if you were thinking of getting one they're all five bucks off and just trying to say thank you while hanson day lasts <laughs>
It's actually just about all albums. It's from Groom Girl, and she was saying, have you ever considered releasing an acapella version of any of your albums in part or whole, or releasing an acapella EP of some sort, material, old, new? Uh, because you know I would love to hear some of that. That's a great idea. We're going to steal it. We're going to steal that. We just stole that idea just now. Hey, I, didn't you have some great idea? I, I had a great idea. We should release an EP. You're like the FedEx guy, acapella. where they say it, and then you're like, we should do. <laughs> we should acapella release an EP, EP. That, that takes all of our music and makes it into just vocals. Then you hear the girl on the other end say, well, that's weird. I said that idea, and you guys weren't into it. And you're like, I'm like yeah, yeah, but I did this and this. <laughs> okay, we're geeks. Off. We're quoting FedEx commercials. It was a great commercial. Was I'll give it. I'll give it to FedEx. I just it's realized we're not even eating our cake. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pop this cherry here. Spread, spread the cake. Um, gosh, I, I'm clicking through questions so fast trying to trying to get to them. But uh, I have a, a question about um, the walk. Asking about what the process was like writing that song in particular and what it means to everyone. Um, you know what the song's about. So. Um, the song "The Walk" is interesting because we we wrote that song before um, walk. before the album was finished. I mean, it was it was one of the earliest songs written for the record Clearly that later became called. Well, w- well, it was on it was on the, the album. The line. album's not necessarily titled before it's finished. So, and we also knew that that album was going to be called "The Walk" really early on. The whole time we were making it, uh, we thought it was going to be called "The Walk," and. That's not usually the case. Like, we finished the new album, Shout It Out, and had no idea what we were going to call it. And really went back and forth with different ideas for a long time. And then It was partially because of touring that, 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 that the title of, of the new record, Shout It Out, came. I don't really care about that. This is good cake. <laughs> exactly. Um, but When you get the most expensive cake, the best cake. It's always good. You reap the rewards. Exactly. Your taste buds. Mm. Exactly. Well, did you... Mm. Divvy out, dude. Oh, okay. this is all mine. But, uh, but we, I was just going to say that in, in more detail, I, but touring on on the the walk around the world tour, which was at the end of 2009, doing that tour and then also playing, actually, this is the stand up stand up tour. Yeah. Sorry. Well, we stand up stand up tour, doing that, and then and, and then playing new music and playing songs like. Waiting for this, which has the shouted out refrain in it, and just some of that other stuff. It, it created a scenario in which I think we, we realized, wow, that's that's the right title. That's it. Kind of it rose I'm to the top. I'm going to slightly correct that. you and say that it, you're right. We didn't know that shouted out was going to be the title, but but that t- that idea, like we hadn't decided. Well, but I but, sh- but the walk was one of those al- that those names that was like were really early on. It was like this album should be called the walk. It was before it, Taylor. It was like 2003 yeah. when the song was like written. The next and album we do. The next album should be called The Walk. Walk. You know? It was just a great title. I, I think don't know. That, that song is essentially about, you know, don't lose yourself in your fear. Don't be afraid to do something that, uh, you know, might be hard. And and that I think is what we felt like we were doing, which was not being fearful and and doing something that was hard, and and, and continuing to be the band with the record label and. And putting a lot on our shoulders, um, and so I think it was just a very appropriate uh, thing to call that record. And and that song, um, I think, probably came out of that thought process of just saying, you know, I'm struggling. Uh, we're we're working really hard, and it's, sometimes you don't feel like you're getting the benefit of the amount of work you're doing, but you still keep pushing through it. And I, I think well, because, you, because you believe in, in where you're headed and, and kind of having that absolute confidence, like the walking the tightrope is that, you know, it's that balancing act. And, and, mm-hmm. and the fact that you're talking about, like, the walk is not exactly like a get psyched type of a title. You know, it's <laughs> like, the walk, <laughs> monster truck rally. You know, it doesn't, it's not like come down to the walk, you know. <laughs> it's, it's about patience and about kind of certainty and mm-hmm. following through. And, and we had people on our team that even during that process that changed over because they looked at us and were like, uh, you're doing, you know, no, well, <laughs> yeah. just, just <laughs> all the things that went with that album. Like, yeah. The, 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 the walks, literally, yeah. um, and the, the message and the, like, the stuff that we were talking about and, and kind of the, how we felt like that album was meant to play out. 
Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so it's great. This is good. It's got a lot of sugar in it, which is yeah. It's good. I know that's why I got a coffee, but I'm glad it was chocolate I'm too. I'm seriously I am buzz, a chocolate I'm fan. Buzzing right now from that. Okay. Cake. Yeah. Another question. Um, uh, this is a question about this time around. Uh, Candy girl Hanson. Uh, there was a, sorry, was there a reason why you left out uh, Don't Wander Through This Glassy Surface verse from a song to sing um, on the recording of the album, uh, thanks for the past 13 years? Well, I mean, the, 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 simple, the simple answer is we, we, we decided that, for We're one, we, it. it was too long. The song yeah. was really long, and, and, um. It, on the new album, the song "Me, Myself, and I," we didn't make we that didn't decision. make that decision. <laughs> we decided to leave it really long. Um, and what was funny is when we played it at five o five, when we reached like four minutes, people were like, "Yay!" They're like, no, it's still going. <laughs> That's kind of what a song to sing was. I'm um, just gonna say there is an edit without the third verse that we had listened to, but the but the but the but of, it, the, of the new uh, off the new record, the, the new the song, other side, "Me, Myself, and I," which you guys obviously were a part of watching the shouted out. Five of five event the, online. The, the other thing about that verse uh, was that that those lyrics really, they really they stood alone. If I, I felt like as as uh, like a, as a poem. short poem, and they, they kind of said something that was different. And I always liked the idea of leaving some things sort of hidden and cloaked. And and I think we've done that in our lyrics a lot, so that people that are actually listening or actually looking sort of understand more than. You know the first the first listen, and I think mm -hmm. everything that we've done, and it's it's always nice to sort of have like okay, this is what you think when you first see it, and then you go deeper, you get that there's all this other stuff, and so the idea that we, there we was like this, to cloak stuff in subtlety. Well, just the idea that there and was synonym. Well, that there was there was a story that was there was like another deeper thought, another further example of what that song meant, and and also that it felt like that verse. Um, connected a little bit with the whole story of that album. Mm -hmm. um, you sort of uh, purpose, you know, is important, and mm -hmm. and I think oftentimes that's been in our story. But this time around, felt like an album that was really uh, it was just a, about you know going forward with what we were feeling and the, the sound we were wanting to create. You totally. know, sort of regardless of what else was going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, we mm. should be, that cake pretty was soon. Good. We should pretty soon. We should play them some some music and, yeah, no, and do I, these paintings. I agree. I, I had one more question that I thought was kind of cool and a little more more thought provoking about just kind of the past thirteen years. Boxers. Ah, you you care? <laughs> um, <laughs> that was the answer. Uh, I have a question about uh, about middle of nowhere. Asking, well, I guess it's really not about middle of nowhere, but asking if. If Mercury Records had never folded, do you think you guys would have stayed with them, or where would you have been? The I answer is I think there's a hell of a lot better chance we would have. Well, yes, but, but the, 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 I think the true answer, though, is all the major labels in the last 10 years have gone through a very, very similar process. In fact, even a lot of the indies that have gotten swallowed up, yeah. where I think inevitably we would have been faced with the same questions well, about, about yeah. uh, like, being swallowed up into the corporate system, mm -hmm. or not? And, I and, think and this time around definitely would have gone differently. Oh my God! Yeah, uh, and, and, that and album would have been a complete. I mean, we don't really talk about that much, but uh, this time around was actually the first album truly affected by the merger because yeah. it, they the, the label that we struggled with when we made underneath and then Merged left right was, at that record. Yeah, they were actually the, the the label that put this time around out, which was I think in a lot of ways you know we struggled to sort of get them to understand that album. Oh, which is, which was why which was why underneath was so hard. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah like that's the that's the untold story. That's the behind the music part of that story. Those uh, those kind of questions, it's always such a hard thing to think about because I mean it's really such an alternate reality. Because if Mercury hadn't folded, that might have meant that the music business had made totally different choices, and and then it might have been a good place to be. You might have been with people who were really being entrepreneurs and really diving into new technologies and digital technologies and making that their business and making, you know, connecting with fans their business rather than kind of the way the business did turn around. And so... Why do I think that's unlikely? Uh, you sound so cheesy. Probably will never happen. But anyway, it was a good question. That's why we're here. 
You guys want to hear some music? Yeah, okay, so I want to hear some music. So there are five new songs, some of which are brand new, and some of which are from the archive of songs never released, which are on the new fan club membership kit. So for everybody that's watching that's a fan club member, um, we're going to play you before you get the disc, and actually everybody that's watching, but fan club members are actually going to get these songs. Um, the five songs, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to give you a nice backdrop for listening. And it is going to be a painting. So uh, they're going to disappear, and I'm going to plug this in. So you guys go ahead. Yeah. Um, well, you're going to have to move that boombox too. Yeah, that's true. You're going to have to. Move. Why don't you go with Zach? Zach's going to show you where the art is. Yeah, go with Zach. Through, through the curtain. Follow me, kids. So this is the other side of uh, Taste Music Exchange, which has had to be kind of torn down a little bit because this is an office that we use, and so this had to turn back into a little meeting area. But we still got um, our. Uh, cases with typewriters and there's a flute and there's a this is the cover of the tambourine that Al used we had him sign oh. it because we're such big fans of Al we love Al and he's awesome he uh, signed his tambourine top come on here we go into uh, the art studio this is the art studio where we've been doing all the paintings for the uh, platinum version of the shout it out uh, packages that we've done you, people hey, may we wonder should, we should show them some of the, oh, the that'd ones be cool. that are come platinum. over here um, people may be wondering why we call them platinum and gold, and the reason we did is because that makes sense with albums. So some people may have figured that out, some people may have not. But but platinum is when you sell a million albums, and gold is when you sell five hundred thousand albums. I, I don't so. know if you like this one, but this is one of my favorites that you've done. I I, I like that one, but Zach has done some I really have... intricate ones, and. This, so these are the paintings that the platinum people that paid for the ultimate package are getting. Um, and what we're going to do right now is a micro version of this for a few, and we're going to give to random. I don't members. think it even counts because we're going to do whatever we do in a minute in like four minutes. These have taken or two a minutes. lot more than four minutes. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll just uh, there's some you know they're just all different pulling from one of a kind the icons. And the art that is a part of the new album. So both trying to do something really unique and cool, but also trying to represent this time period in the band and, and this time period in how we feel like we want people to experience the art. You know, part of what you do when you make album art is um, that's part of the expression of your music. And so, you know, if we put a big you look at the cover of Pet Sounds, and it's the Beach Boys feeding goats, and that makes you think something about their record. I don't know if it was positive, but it was goats. So this is one, like, this is me painting uh, the boombox that Isaac's going to be playing off of, which is kind of cool, so you can see it's like a, just a representation of, of that boombox, and here's one that... Ike was doing, he did a couple different versions of this. I think it's kind of cool. If you know about the history of the band, it makes this even cooler that the way we were first really inspired to start the band was listening to a cassette tape uh, with music from 1958. And uh, it just kind of, I don't know, it has a little more meaning than just what you might think. I'm just going to go through and find some of the different ones. This is actually one of my favorites. It's of myself, but just doing like the blue on the blue is kind of cool. And then I did one of, of uh, Isaac that way. It's kind of hard to see, but it looks really cool. It's kind of subtle. And then, anyway, lots of different ones. I've got a stack of them. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to play the song. And then as we play the song, we're going to just do a little art. And then one of you guys is going to win it. So it's going to be cool. One of you fan club members. It's only for fan club members are going to win it. So make sure you're signed in so that we can see that you're on the website. And um, if you're watching, you might win it. So how are we doing over here? We're close. We're having a technical issue because this is not designed for a particular device. Oh. So anyway, you guys go ahead and do your thing. I Why don't you get set up and play. show them how you do the painting? Oh, cool. Okay, this one is, this song is called This is the Jam. Oh, God. Okay, this, this was Zach, the first song Zach wrote at this year's Fool's Banquet, which for you guys that don't know, Fool's Banquet is a songwriting retreat we've done for six years. Ike's going to do a ghetto right now. He's going to plug it in. Here we go. Okay, it started. Here we go.
So much pressure! Unfair. This I'm gonna. No. We're gonna restart. We're gonna restart. Restart that, dude. That that doesn't count. We can't let people hear this song partway through. Stop it. Okay. God. So, like we said, technical difficulties. I unplugged the boombox while we were rocking. See, I'm coming up with this stuff on the spot. This is the jam. Get it? Everybody get it? Technically, that's the jam. Like the song's about jamming, like playing music. Okay. Same time. Keep going. Oh God. better. 
This is really getting crazy. Um, so okay, we're gonna cheat just a little bit. So I'm gonna re-explain to everyone what we're doing. Right now, we're playing you guys premiering for the first time ever the five songs that are in the 2010 Hands Not Net membership kit. Are you cheating? Which is fun. No, he's not cheating. He, he didn't get started when you started. And so what we're doing, just as a fun way to, you know, give you guys something fun to watch. Um, as we play the song, we're doing like a mini painting during the song, which is fun. And then we're going to give away each of the paintings to uh, the member uh, randomly picked that's on watching right now uh, and just send to you. It's just a gift for being an Enhanced.net member. And I actually, uh, actually have the first winner is gender. Ginger. Well, is her actual name. Ginger is her is her uh, screen, screen name. name. That's Ginger, D Z E R K. Zerks. 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 Wow, we can't pronounce that. I'm sorry. Zerks. Forgive us. Um, so you win this, which is awesome. I don't I don't know if it's actually awesome, but it was kind of fun. And I ruined my shirt, so maybe I should sign my shirt as well. But I'll probably keep this shirt. See if I can't sell with me. That's all you. Okay. Did we set a rule that we can't adjust any of these after the song? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we didn't technically. Actually, but I would, yeah, leave that, leave that taped up for everybody to, to see. see. Okay. Okay, so we got Live Forever, right? Uh, what's next? We've got, we've got a song called Ordinary Words. Let's go, let's go. Okay, think about your inspiration. Sorry, I'm going to, we, we never rehearsed this. This is all in the moment. So this is all in the moment. So we're, what we're going to go with is, Think about the inspiration for a song called Ordinary Words, okay? Like, stuff like, hey, what's up? Wow. And mean, blah, um, blah, blah, blah. Are, are you actually saying? Which is, like, that catchy song. Right? Wow. TikTok, TikTok. Man. Ordinary words. No, but the point is the, is, of the song is, is the fact that there's no time there's for no ordinary, ordinary words. Like, you gotta so get, really, like, is we should it's the write like stuff like anti-disestablishmentarianism. No, you need wow. to write the songs like, like word, words about commitment and, like, you know, true love. Okay. Let's yeah. hit it. Let's hit it. Let's okay. hear it. I, so grid, it. grid of words. That's what we need to do. Oh, or, God, God, I don't know. Or symbols. Just, symbols you represent. You hear the music and you let it move you. Okay. It's just symbols so that you, Does it soothe you? Does it fill your heart and soul? With I, the, I, quit I, quoting your just, own song. Just, just start it, man. Okay. Sorry. Good Lord. Okay, go for it. Okay. No, no, we can't start yet. I, I, I got we got We got to get this started. We got to hear We got to hear this stuff. You gotta hear it through the boombox. Just wait in a minute while I get worked up. I actually have the same. Hope you guys winner. are enjoying this 
this uh, this little romp that we're doing here. Uh, the, the second winner of oh, the second, second painting is Amanda Purser, um, whose name is Math Geeks. Yeah, yeah, Math Geeks. I guess yeah, he's Math Geeks Squared. Yeah. Right. So hope you are going to enjoy that. Yeah. So you you win the second painting just for watching, which is kind of cool. Um, and you know, you're going to get it whether you like it or not. That's just the way this works. All right, here we go. So. Make what was that, DJ? You're about to get voted off the island. <laughs> so now I can find those cool songs. Long song! We were listening to that one. Good Lord. This is like... Here we go. There it is. There it is. Here we go. Dictionary or something. Yeah, it's kind of it. How the contest works is if you are a Hanson.net user, if you're a Hanson.net member, you sign in, and we're going to pick somebody at random, and they are going to get this next painting. We've already given away two so far, so just reminding everybody. There's still sound. Sound and stop. Bingo! It's got, some, it's, got, it's got like a... You know, kids, these, these aren't masterpieces. But what they are is moments in time. Yeah. I'm 
You're trying to make it sound really fancy. Yeah, it is. It <laughs> sounds fancy. Um, what if I draw? I, I was thinking of drawing something. Well, what's we have live forever. Oh. Um, and uh, that's Lucian, right? Yeah. Two more songs to go. So what we're doing is we're playing you guys all the songs off the new membership kit, which is awesome. And Ike was trying to explain over the music kind of how the contest works. And um, basically the way the contest works is we're giving these away to Hanson.net members. So if you're a member of the fan club, uh, just sign on and watch. And we're just picking people at random that are watching on the website. So if you're on and you're watching, then uh, you have a chance to win. It's that simple. There's nothing nothing more special about it other than being signed in. So uh, just make sure you're signed in when you're watching. <laughs> oh, um, I was thinking of Live Forever State. That Live Forever is about station. That station is about committing to do, like, deciding to do something is better than just, like, not making a decision to take action. So right. people can't complain when they don't do anything, even if they don't like what happens after. You know. Um, so, let's see. See, I, are you ready? Uh, I think I'm ready. I just was. I was thinking about like talking to people really quickly. Oh, I I could send him messages on on uh, Hanson.net right now. So I guess send him a message if you want to talk. But he needs to start the music again. What lives forever? Nothing okay. lives forever. Ready? Okay. What's next? Live forever or bad solution? Uh, bad solution is next. Okay. Uh, That solution. It's a hard one. That's a hard one. I think, uh, go for it. Right. Are you ready? That's not the right what? song. Ah. Drawing. 
this song was written at Fool's Banquet in um, in 07. In 07, and it was written, it's like a crazy amount of people were playing in the room. And who so, were on it? We had Carrick, Andrew WK in the room. We had our friend Eric, the three, two of us. Eric from High Factor, the two Pedro, of us. Pedro. Um, from Morning I feel Wood. like there was like, I... At the end, no, I, I Well, I, I joined in. I, I wasn't totally... Oh, and Stephen Trask. There you go. Yep. So, and, and yes, so all those people did ever. get credit on that I, song. I was, trying, I was trying to kind of capture a little bit of what it felt like in the room. Guys, I think that's actually one of my favorite paintings so far. I, okay, uh, I have an idea for this one. Uh, I, well, I, I want to throw something out there, too, like for everybody. I want to do a sketch of, like, a, of like a little house, like a, mm -hmm. but the idea being like nothing lives forever, and so it's a, it's a house up on a hill. And there's flames coming from the other side. We've only got a few minutes left on our. On I know, our and also stream. the last song is really short. Exactly, it's only, it's like only two, two minutes, minutes long. long. So I wanted to say one other quick thing, which is for those of you who don't know what Fool's Banquet is, we just mentioned yeah. Fool's Banquet. Yeah. Fool's yeah. Banquet is a thing that we do every single year. Uh, we invite uh, approximately anywhere from a dozen to you know twenty different artists. They come to Oklahoma, and. We break up into groups of three, and every single day we write and record a song. It's a ton of fun. Uh, there have been a lot of great songs that have come out of it, including songs like Go, Watch Over Me, Running Man, which have ended up on records. Uh, also, although Zach didn't actually co-write it with anybody, but there was a really great song called uh, Musical, Musical Ride. Ride, which is on the coming record. Which so, is obviously the inspiration for the name of the Musical Ride for us. Which yes, exactly. We we'll really hope to do, uh, but later we're not on this doing year. this year. We're not doing this year so far. Uh, plans could change, but bad. but hopefully we'll cross our we'll cross our fingers that that'll happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but my point being, I just wanted to give everybody a little bit of context for those of you who are uh, are watching and are not fan club members. Uh, we are uh, actually giving away one of these paintings, one of these two, brilliant one of paintings. the uh, one of the <laughs> fan club members. Everybody that's logged in, if you if you're a fan club member and you're logged in, you have an opportunity to win this just by watching it. By watching the stream, we've done what we're doing is these. picking at random. We're we've just done each one of these as we've been doing, as we've been watching, or as we've been listening to the music okay. from the fan club membership. We get, we better, wrap we better it up. do it. Yeah. Okay. So, so right. this is a song that was written and recorded originally for the walk. Yes. And didn't make it on the record, but you might have seen it in the podcast on Take the Walk podcast. Mm -hmm. But the fan club members this year are going to get this song. It's two minutes, right? It's John. like two, two and a half minutes. Yeah. Boom. Okay. I need like, I owe the tiger, it's the throat. I need that playing in the background. But you're going to have to play for everyone. I get my self control because I. <laughs> <laughs> I just started playing the wrong thing. <laughs> so that we can actually finish it in time. That's a really, it's a really short song. It's a really short song. Ready? Three, How you guys doing? Wait, okay. Three, two, one, go. That's supposed to be a road. Can't wiggle that many times a road. It's okay. If you can. Yeah. This is a river. Okay, come with the color in a second. Okay, we need trees over it. Oh, okay, okay. Well, let, let me do the tree first. Let me do the transit first.
Oh no. Pin's crapping out on him. Need another pen to stab. This has been the jam. It has been a this has been a handsome day experience. We hope you guys have enjoyed it. This has been the preview of the coming fan club membership kit. It's coming to all you fan club members out there. We hope you guys have enjoyed this broadcast. Happy Hanson Day for those of you who don't know. We're celebrating the anniversary. Thank you guys of for being with us for 13 years so far, and hopefully many, many more to come. We will um, see you guys really soon on the Bamboozle Roadshow and then on the summer tour in July, which is going to be awesome. Shout out to her. Rooney's coming with us. Um, Rocket to the Moon's going to be out with us. And um, we love you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Go eat some cake. Have a good time. And we will contact you winners out there, for those of you who don't already know who you are. Uh, we'll, so. we